Hello everybody and welcome back to the funniest tweets. So you join me here in Austin in a kitchen. That's right, we really are just recording wherever the hell we can find a place. And we have got some incredible reactions from you lot because you know what? We got things to celebrate, we got controversial stuff and you have made the memes. So let's dive into them. Ferrari victorious. Obviously, we're going to start with the moment, the, I guess, the, one of the talking points, one of the big talking points, Ferrari winning, Ferrari 1-2, and let's go with at Nell underscore Megan, Leclerc today, my guy was in the kitchen cooking up an absolute storm, he, I reckon Charles knew that a max dive bomb was coming that it was absolutely being sent into that first corner. So he's just watching. Where's Max going to go? Oh, beautiful. There he goes. Down the inside. Thank you very much. And dominated from there. And he cooked up an absolute treat. At Adelru. This, this was quite funny, wasn't it, at the moment? The team radio, uh, where they were talking about phase one breaking to Carlos Sainz. We're all sat there going, don't really know what that means. Perhaps there's a little bit of code or, or whatever. Carlos himself had no idea what it meant either. So I'm not sure what he then decided to do after that, but uh, the fact, I mean, the fact that Carlos himself had no idea what they were talking about just kind of made, made I think us Formula One fans be like, oh, okay, may maybe some things just don't make sense. Another one about that, at more than seven digits, Carlos signs after hearing break release. And that is just the most apt Sergio Perez meme ever. The most, most visible confusion you could possibly see in one photo. At X Dark Shadow 50X, Ferrari fans right now. Lando versus Max in the final laps, Ferrari in P1 and 2. Because of the fact we had this massive championship potentially deciding battle between Lando and Max and can Lando incrementally get closer to Max in the championship. You sort of forgot about the Charles Leclerc domination going on and Carlos Sainz doing a fantastic job in P2. We're all focused on the controversy unfolding between Lando and Max and then, oh, oh yes, yeah, the last lap. Charles Leclerc round the final corner wins the United States Grand Prix. Oh, that fit. That sounds so good. Another unexpected win for Ferrari and Charles Leclerc this year, and I will absolutely take it. At Nell underscore Megan again with another Ferrari meme which makes the cut. Yes, well done, Charles. And then that is actually, yes, a Photoshop of me uh, <laughs> in the Wolf of Wall Street celebrating uh, that Charles Leclerc won at Cota. So that is, that's brilliant. The, the, the happiness, that, that picture was actually from uh, outside the Ferrari HQ in Italy. So matches my happiness pretty nicely indeed. At Joe Goat 6B, Matt Gallagher after today. <laughs> Cuddling the one, two. Just Ferrari just know how to do it. You know what I mean? They don't bring any upgrades. They fail to elaborate after winning, getting a one, two. Off to Mexico we go. And then mysteriously probably we'll have no pace and then I'll be back to crying again. But that's me being realistic, okay? Delirious map is going, let's win the last five and two sprints and get fastest lap in every single one of them and ask the question of Max and Lando. Also worth saying about the fact that Ferrari are only eight points behind Red Bull in the constructors and 40 odd behind McLaren. It is championship back on in the constructors. Do many people care about the constructors? No, but if it's the only thing Ferrari can win, sign me up. At I, Eric Hoff, another cooking meme. Ferrari absolutely cooked the US Grand Prix. A little P1 in one frying pan, another P2 in the other. Mwah! Beautiful. At <laughs> Frank the 44 Dank, Austin GB be like the two Titans, Max versus Lando. Uh uh, Ferrari. Bonk. At, there's another one from at Joe Goat 6P. Lando and Max fighting. Meanwhile, Ferrari. Just chilling out in front, one hand on the wheel, just chill. We're on holiday right now. We're relaxing. We're just soaking in the fact that Ferrari, for some reason, were really quick this weekend. Max versus Lando. Right, we're going straight into the controversial topic of Lando versus Max. Of course, we discussed it on the podcast, but we're going to throw in some memes as well to really get a good picture of this. At Branco underscore Tack just released video footage from the stewards box. <laughs> now, this is this is this is contentious. 
Some people think the stewards completely and utterly not consistent with their decisions. Others believe that it was the correct decision. After reviewing everything that went on, I know that Russell versus Bottas was something that was brought up as well. Why did Russell get a penalty uh, and Max didn't? Well, when you look at the apex, which is where everything is measured, Russell and Bottas were side by side. You then go to the Max and Lando screenshot, and as much as Max lunged at the apex, his halfway further ahead than Lando is at the apex. Max knows these rules like no tomorrow. Do I agree with this meme? Not really. Of course, as well, there's turn one, lap one, which I think a lot of Lando fans feeling aggrieved about the fact Max pushed him wide. But again, Max knows that there's a leniency when it comes to turn one, lap one. Oh yeah, push you off the track a little bit. Thank you very much. Do we, do we hate the rules or do we hate the players right now? Because I feel like the rules do need to be clarified. They need to be changed slightly to actually improve wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. Because right now, Max knows what to do to take advantage of this. Uh, I don't think it promotes great wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. I don't want to see him lunging into a corner in a car having to get out of it because he's being pushed off the track. That's not Formula One racing for me. So let's see, will they make another change? They made the fastest lap point change straight after Singapore. I don't think they're gonna make a change into Mexico, but perhaps for next year. At Casito underscore NL, McLaren walking to the stewards right now. Wow, McLaren not happy. Zach Brown not happy. He, Zach Brown is popping off at the moment. I'm seeing him complaining left, right and centre. He he wants answers to everything. And that's what Formula One teams do. You know, some people, oh, you're crying, blah, blah. Every Formula One team will cry about other teams. That's just the way they try and gain any kind of advantage. Uh, I see some people saying McLaren need to appeal. You can't appeal a racing incident unless there is new evidence to suggest that they made the wrong decision. There is no new evidence, sadly, uh, for McLaren fans. And <laughs> yeah, the stewards, I would never, ever, ever want to be a steward because that is the worst job in the world. At Mr. Bear 15, drive to survive producers after the Austin GP. There it is, roll it out. The jackpot office meme. I had to include it because it was jackpot once again. How on earth are we gonna have 10 episodes in Drive to Survive? We filled those slots within about six races. Actually, no, the first five or six were rubbish. The middle of the season, there's about 20 episodes worth of content. So we're all gonna be at the end of Drive to Survive going, I cannot believe that this, 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 and this was not included. At JMS24, another controversial little meme, FIA when investigating Verstappen and it is Blind Joey from Friends. Tommy is currently sat actually just to my, well, to my right down there, shaking his head. He can't believe such a meme was created, but a lot of people agreed with it. So look, we live and breathe for Formula One controversies and all this kind of stuff to discuss as Formula One fans. We're never gonna agree, but uh, the FIA, Oh, well, some people think they were right, some people think they were wrong. I personally think they got it right with the rules that are written, but I didn't like it from a racing standpoint. That's how I sit on it. Honourable mentions. At J underscore 75, Hamilton's race summed up. Okay, I'm a fight from P18 to the front. Damn, turn 19 gravel, got hands. Yes, indeed. He was, Hamilton was flying, he was up to P12. He genuinely, wait, I think he would have absolutely beaten Russell in that race, for sure, you know, those two. Hamilton's a bit quicker in, in races generally. And of course, they both started towards the back and Russell actually had quite a slow beginning phase of the race. So Hamilton could have easily been in the mix there for sure, but Hit a bump, apparently a gust of wind, Nico Rosberg-esque, and around he went. And it's a very uncharacteristic mistake from Hamilton, you have to say. And it, I think it just highlights, because Russell had exactly the same problem in exactly the same corner in qualifying. That Mercedes, not, a knife's edge does not even come close to describing what that car must be like. At JL Rube, a bedtime story for the Merck fans. Lewis Hamilton and the terrible, oh sorry, the Hamilton and the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. That's not a book I think many Mercedes fans would read, but it was one of the worst uh, weekends for Hamilton that I can remember in a very long time. But you're coming to Ferrari soon, Lewis. Come on over, mate, you'll have better times. As much as Ferrari get memed, they've got a pretty good car at the moment. 
at smithyboy3000. Try to tell the McLaren and Alpines apart be like. Honestly, one of the most bizarre decisions. I'm not really sure what Alpine are doing from an identity perspective right now, because they quite literally are just sticking red on for a Deadpool movie, and then you've got flipping this goldy, orangey, browny color for Indiana Jones. I know that Formula One cars are essentially just advertising billboards, but this is kind of more on an identity side of things because every other part of the car is carbon. So how do you really differentiate? <laughs> Apart from the massive BWT, but is that enough? At Mufi17, burnt Mylander when Lewis beaches his car and the safety car is deployed. It's been 3,000 years. I know, the safety car finally back, but it didn't really change much because it was so early on in the race that you're kind of just, well, okay, the safety car's out, but it didn't really change much of the complexion of the race. That Space Manly, Burt Mylander, when there's a safety car for the first time in 10 races, quite literally, my, my man's just been going to races, sat there, probably just chilling, having some snacks, just waiting for the call up that never came. How's Formula One become so predictable in the sense of not having enough drama to bring out safety cars and this sort of stuff? Yes, I want more of these kind of unpredictable moments. And Bernd Mylander, look, the guy, the guy is a legend. Get him out on track. Let him lead more races. At Brendan R. Ren C1, Colapinto is cooking in that Williams. And that is the size of the dish that Franco is currently cooking up. Himself and Lawson, both of them were seriously chefing this weekend. Colapinto, once again, I mean, hats off to him. He has been so good since he came into Formula One. As much as not a lot of people probably knew much about him coming into F1 to replace Logan. But now everybody knows about him and he is in the pound seats, maybe not for next year year but the year after 2026 if he is not on the grid then it is an absolute disaster for formula one he has proven he is an incredible young talent get him on the grid at mr bear 15 george russell after receiving a five second penalty the most george russell what ever that george russell has his own incredible personality down the team radio and he never fails to deliver at Kaz Navalo, Colapinto fighting like a madman with half the grid. He's just getting his elbows out. So is Liam Lawson. Both of them rookies. They're like, I don't care who you are. Fernando who? Get out the way. Now, nah, I'll shove it down the inside. No problem. I don't care. You're just a car. You're not a driver. You're not anyone scary. And I love that. I love that sort of young naivety to just go, I'm here and I'm here to stay. It's Tommy's Tasty Tweet IRL edition. Summon Tommy. Hello. Hi, Tommy. Who has won the fantastic F124 by EA? That is a picture element, and it's with this never-ending gift uh, of Norris overtaking Verstappen. It's actually infuriating to watch, and it was infuriating to watch. Even as a Verstappen fan, I don't think I've ever been more frustrated watching someone try to overtake my favorite driver. Um, no, just get yeah. it done. Yeah, just get it done. Um, yeah, a great use of a gift there. It's a great gift, just over and over, never hitting it like, ah, please, I need no. And it perfectly sums up what Lando versus Max was. So thank you, Tommy, and well done to a picture element. You will get a copy of F120. Right, that is it. Thank you so much for tuning in to this Austin Kitchen for the funniest tweets. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's been amazing to do our US tour and starting in Canada, and it was just utterly sensational. There are tickets available for our UK end of season special live show tour, middle of December, a perfect Christmas present. So if you want to come along, then there'll be a link to the tickets in the description. And we will see you literally next weekend for this same series because it's Mexico, and we'll see you very soon. Lots of love. Bye.